Broadway's my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's my beat. With Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Avenue of the beggars, the gleaming alley of the scavengers who dart and search and revel in the blaze of fury, then gather in the gutters of night. There they count and catalog and compare the spoils salvaged from the litter of darkness, the materials of pain, the odds and ends of bitterness, the scraps of illusion. And you watch them and try to move away, but you can't. You're one of them. It's Broadway, my beat. is dismal and cold. The walls are covered with many coats of green paint. You know that because initials have been gouged into them. Because there are scars where fingers have clawed at them. It's a room where pain is brought in off the streets and wrapped in sterile gauze and sent on its way. A police emergency ward close to the East River. A girl wrapped in a brown blanket lies on the table in the center of the room. And the naked light bulb draws the color out of her. Glitters on her dank hair. And finally the man who has been bent over her sighs shudders and finds you in a shadow. I could trouble you for a cigarette, Danny? Sure, sure, here. Mm, thanks. Well, Dr. Sinsky? A moment, Danny. Give me a moment. The girl? I'll never adjust to it. The girl? She'll be all right, Danny. I think she'll be all right. Suicide attempt? This is a question, Danny. That's why I called you. Maybe suicide. Maybe somebody wanted a dead, pushed her into the river because they wanted a dead. Mm -hmm. You're crazy, Doc. I've been telling you she wanted to die, so she picked the river. Who are you? I'm her husband. I don't work at it, though, so I still don't understand why I was called. Maybe you can tell me, mister. This is Danny Clover, a good detective, a good man. Show him respect, Mr. Guilford. Yeah, okay. Please, Mr. Clover, will you tell me why I was called down here? Please. Maybe they thought you'd shed a tear over your wife. Give me another reason, Mr. Clover. We called him, Danny, to identify the girl. We found one of those 10-cent store identification cards on her. It said she was Janet Guilford. In case of emergency, to notify her husband, Mark Guilford. You see the results. You say your wife wanted to die, Mr. Guilford. You knew about that? Yeah, I knew. She told me often enough. She held it over me like a whip. She beat me with it how she was going to kill herself. A man like me can only take so much of that, Mr. Clover. Only so much. So you tried to make her wish come true. Try again, Mr. Clover. I haven't been near her in uh, wait, three months. Wait, Why would I pick it, Danny? I want it to be quiet. It must be quiet. Uh, Mrs. Guilford. Hey, don't be frightened, Mrs. Guilford. You're all right. Who are you? Who are you to tell me I'm all right? Who are you? I'm a doctor, Mrs. Guilford. Are you mistaken? You see the shock? Shock? <laughs> Mrs. Guilford, please. I hate you. I hate you. I hate all of you good Samaritans. <laughs> what do you get? A medal for saving a life I don't want? No one wants? Mrs. Guilford, we brought your husband. Come here, Mr. Guilford. Your husband, Mrs. Guilford, he is very concerned over you. Yeah. Yeah, Janet, you should... Take your hands off me! Take them off! Okay, Janet. Okay. Mrs. Guilford, taking your own life is... Against the law? Against whose law? Yours? And yours? And his? My husband's? Mrs. Guilford... You're a policeman, aren't you? Yes. I'll tell you something, because you're a policeman. You didn't let me die when I wanted to die. But I'll die, even if I have to make you kill me. I'll do something, and you'll have to kill me. Then I'll be dead. 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 <laughs> then Dr. Sinsky became impersonal about the whole thing. Somehow there was suddenly a cotton daub in one hand, a hypo in the other. In a few moments, Janet Guilford's protest became sobs, and the sobs trailed off into sleep. And each morning after that, reports were put on my desk. Janet Guilford was in shock. Then she was a little better, taking nourishment. On Monday, they sent me some ink blots. Translation, Janet Guilford was a lot better. Tuesday, she was ashamed of what she had done. Thursday, 
she was released. Then it was Thursday night and a squad car called into headquarters. Central Park detail calling. The spring night had just been shattered. A woman's been found shot to death a couple of hundred yards in back of the zoo. Get down here. I did. Hi, Danny. Right over here. Okay, Florian. Brief me. What happened? Up on that flat, Danny, and it's off the big rock. Come on. Hmm. Yeah, right over there. That happened. Shot in the back, huh? Mm-hmm. From up close. I'd say someone had an arm around it with a gun. Find the weapon? No, maybe it's around. We'll have to wait until daylight to make sure. Attractive woman like that. Well, she tried to be. We had a little more time to look, Danny. An awful lot of makeup. Anyhow, too much for just strolling in Central Park. Identification? Yeah, yeah, a wallet. Social security card, driver's license. Name's Thelma Harper, 1414 Front Street, Bronx. We saw it says in a wallet. Let's see. Huh? Yeah, here. Yeah, a little more flashlight hmm? for you. Oh. She had a lot of friends. Hey, you mean those pictures? Yeah, yeah, she did. I guess one of her friends fooled her. Well, hmm? You're getting careless about light fire. Oh, oh sorry. How about this? Huh? What? I'm not sure. These Coney Island snapshots. A man and a woman with their heads stuck through cardboard props to make them look like hula dancers. And very clear. Yeah, it's pretty clear, Danny. I'd say the woman was Thelma Harper. Me too. You know what I'd say about the man? Mm, no, I don't. I'd say it so I'll know. Huh? I'd say his name was Mark Guilford. I'd say this is the man whose wife tried to commit suicide a few days ago. At headquarters, they gave me Mark Guilford's address, a rooming house on West 16th Street. It was dawn, but already the watchwomen of the street were leaning out of upstairs windows, their arms folded and resting on pillows to ease the hardships of their occupation. They watched me, classified me, nodded dawn's greeting to each other, with their eyes pointed me out to each other, and then discarded me in favor of a yelping dog. In a hallway, lighted with a 10-watt bulb, I found the door to Mark's room. There was no answer. I tried the knock. It was locked. Then there was the sound of someone coming up the stairs. It was Mark Guilford. Hey, you, what are you doing? You're trying to play... Hey, good morning, Mark. Oh, it's Mr. Clover of the police department. What's the matter, Mr. Clover? Janet, try it again. Let's go into your room. Yeah, sure, sure. Here, I'll turn on the light. It's not cozy, but it's private. Till now. You may have the chair, Mr. Clover. You've been out, Mark? Yeah, sure, I've been out. Big night, home at dawn. Every night is that way with me, big. Tell me about tonight. Mind if I wash my face and hands first? No, you don't mind. What's uh, special about tonight? Thelma Harper. She was... Uh, you mind handing me that towel, Mr. Clover? Thanks. Thelma Harper, Mark. Yeah. Good kid. She's a lot of fun. Takes a man's mind off of things. man like me. She was found dead tonight in Central Park. I'll just hang this towel out the window to dry... They always do that, it never dries. You didn't hear me, Mark. Thelma Harper was murdered, shot in the back. I heard you. What do you want me to do, to cry, scream, tear my hair out? A man like me, I don't do things like that. But a man like you has your picture taken with Thelma at Coney Island. What else does a man like you do, Mark, like tonight? I work. What? I work. Every night of my life, I work. Except holidays. Where? The city power plant. I nurse the dynamos. Listen to their whining. One stops whining, lights go out in the street and houses. I coax the dynamo, lights go back on. I do this every night. Tonight, too, you can check. We will. Have you asked Janet about Thelma's murder? No. Should I? Yeah, you should. That's what broke Janet and me up, this Thelma kid. Between swearing to kill herself and or Thelma, Janet had me on a merry-go-round. Would figure, wouldn't it, Mr. Clover? You'll stick around, huh, Mark? In case we need you for anything. Yeah, sure, glad to. But you'll see, Mr. Clover, it's like I told you, that Janet... <laughs> very confused girl. Very. Mark's alibi checked. After that, there was only one thing to do. Pick up Janet Guilford. It should have been simple. She'd given us an address. I went there in a squad car. I would have made it, except that the East River stopped me. 
Somewhere in the middle of the river is where she would have lived if the address had existed at all. Then an all-points bulletin, pick up Janet Guilford. She was wanted for questioning in connection with a murder. And all the while a thought was taking shape and trying to get itself heard. Eventually, I would have put it into words if Dr. Sinsky hadn't beaten me to it. It was at headquarters, and he started off gently. Danny? Oh, come in, Dr. Sinsky. Thanks. Am I interrupting, Danny? Uh-uh. Oh, then I'll sit. I, uh, got a few things on my mind. Me too. I've, I've been, been thinking, thinking that... that... <laughs> it looks like we both were. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doctor. Go ahead. You know... When you practice medicine around the police department, something happens to you. Something rubs off and sticks. What are you trying to say? Uh, for instance, this. A police physician gets his medicine mixed up with motives. I treat a wound, I ask myself, what circumstance, what did the will do to this person to produce this hurt? You're getting at something, Dr. Sinsky? Yeah, yeah, Danny, I am. I'm trying to explain. I'm trying to excuse myself for making a suggestion belongs to your department. Oh, I'd be happy for it. Danny... Several days ago, a woman named Janet Guilford tried to kill herself. In her hysteria, she swore she would die somehow, even if she made the police kill her. People say all sorts of things under stress, but uh, now... Go ahead. I've uh, been reading the reports. Uh, suppose Janet killed Thelma Harper. Janet would be a murderess. A woman can be executed. Janet would get her wish. She'd die. Oh, pardon me, Doctor. Oh, sure. Danny Clover speaking. Mugovan, Danny, we found Janet Guilford. Good. Where is she? In a flea bag on 3rd Avenue, 2220. You better hurry, Danny. She might not be here long. Uh, in this room here, Danny. Suicide. Pull motor squad still working on her. Who found her? I found her. I found her right there where she is now, and I didn't touch a thing except... Except what? Well, I kicked out the window. I smelled gas in here, and I saw right away what happened, so I kicked out the window and called you police. Who are you? Mrs. Lamp. I own this awful place. Mr. Lamp left it to me, and I run it as a tribute to his memory. He told me on his deathbed, he said, Mrs. Lamp, I'm leaving you the flea bag. I want okay, you to... Okay, okay. How did you happen to find her? Well, this lady here told me yesterday. She said she might not be home for a couple of days. So I come in to feed her canary, and I smelled gas, and I saw and kicked in the window and called you police. Yeah. Danny. Yeah, what is it, Margaret? Poor motor boy just gave me the nod. Dead. Janet Guilford's dead. Yeah, Danny. Dead. <laughs> Listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. You've got to listen close on Broadway. That's the only way you can tell if the sound you just heard was laughter or somebody beating back a scream in his throat. Not that it makes a lot of difference. Broadway reacts to clowns and murder in pretty nearly the same way. In the matter of Thelma Hopper, a woman who died in Central Park, Broadway was appreciative of the setting. It went with spring. In the suicide of Janet Guilford, Broadway passed it off as the B production which went with the main feature. Or as Sergeant Gino Tataglia said it the next day in my office. This is where I came in, Danny. Huh? This is where I came 20 years ago this very day. What are you talking about, Tataglia? Twenty years ago, there sat in that very desk you are now ensconced, a Lieutenant Marsala. His daughter Nina came to visit him. I walked in, we looked. Without a word was hardly spoken, we walked down to the city hall and became Mr. and Mrs. Tartaglia. Oh, <laughs> it's your anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah, I knew I dragged that out of you. Hey, hey, look, Danny, a new shave, courtesy of the ever-loving Mrs. Tartaglia and the shave master she gave me. <laughs> My face and this shave make a handsome couple, huh? Striking, Tartaglia. Then please... Now, uh, Danny, if you don't mind, I think that's enough idle chatter. How's about let's get into work, huh? All right, if you put it that way. 
Frankly, Danny, work is at a low. Imagine that. And I thought we had a murder to work on. You know, I, I just don't understand, Danny. I thought this case was open and shut. Tell me how. Well, Janet Guilford tries to commit suicide. Fails. Is unhappy because she fails. Thelma Harper, who is gadding about with Janet's husband, is found shot to death. Then Janet tries to commit suicide again. Succeeds. One and one makes two. As simple as that. Sure. Janet murders the source of her trouble, which is Thelma. Then Janet turns on the gas. Yeah, it's probably just that way. But what about Thelma Harper? Anything there? Oh, we have questioned Miss Harper's friends and enemies with dispatch and diligence. Each one has produced a textbook-type alibi, which would be tough to crack with a crowbar. All of them, huh? Except Holly Morris. Who's Holly Morris? Thelma's maid. Well, why haven't you questioned her? Well, we can't find her. Nowhere. As if, whoosh, she went up in a puff of smoke. Tartaglia, get an all-points bulletin out on Holly Morris. Find her. Bring her in. Find her, Tartaglia. Turn around pay attention, Danny. It's Mugovan. Oh. Anything? Nothing, Danny. Why don't you tell somebody you're hiding out communications? You found me. What do you want? I tracked down every lead on Holly Morris. Seems everybody knows everything about her except where she's disappeared to. Stay with it. Danny, it's a plain to everybody that Janet Guilford committed the murder. What are you building? You'll stay with it, Muggerman. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you're interested, there's a guy waiting for you in your office. What? Huh? Uh, when I was looking for you, I peeked in your office. There's a guy there. Uh, Danny, I'll keep checking with you. Danny, Danny, such a long time no see. Hiya, Danny. Hi, Irv. What's on your mind? Ah, oh, Danny, I can tell by your expression you are very busy in the brain department. So I'll come right to the point. I will not tell you how is Mrs. Newman or about the lousy cab business. What is it, Irv? It's about a dame by the name of Holly Morris. What about her? I understand the police department needs her. There are bulletins to this effect in the company garage. Her picture. Have you seen this woman? Report it. You know where she is? Gentle, Danny, gentle. Let me at least dramatize it. Yesterday in the afternoon, gets into my cab, a dame. Take me through the park, she says. I take her through the park. She talks to me about spring and such things. Then take me home, she says. I take her home. The fare is $1.60, I say. She gives me a fin for a tip. This is so you will remember me, she says. And when I saw a picture in the garage, I remembered her even better. The generous lady is Holly Morris. Where'd you take her? To a basement apartment in a brownstone. 2967 West 68th Street. Hey, Danny, you'll come to the house for blintzes sometime. It's always open... something I can understand. You hear? Wake up. Get up and talk to me. What's, what's going on here? 
Who are you? Dewey. I'm Dewey. What are you doing here? What happened? If you Take don't easy, tell me... Friend. I'm... I'm a policeman. Now you tell me what happened. I'm Dewey. I'm the super here. Run things. Keep the water hot. Complaint department. What about the girl on the bat, Dewey? Oh, I didn't notice her. I only noticed you. I heard noises. I hurried to the scene. I found your body on the rug. Start all over, huh? What about the girl on the bed? She's a tenant. I like her. She's dead, Dewey. I just don't believe you. You believe she... Everyone is a potential cop... Dead? Strangled. Dead? A little while ago, I walked in on it. Whoever strangled Holly Morris tried to beat me to death. I guess you disturbed him. Oh, the fellas will never believe it when I tell them. Look, Dewey, you still haven't told me very much about Holly. You want to do that now or down at headquarters? What? Now or at headquarters? Uh, 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 now. Then tell me. Well, well, Holly Morris was our latest tenant. She paid her rent a month in advance. Oh, she was lavish with her money in that she tipped profusely and gave gratuities whether the occasion called for it or not. Obviously, a woman of wealth and station. Believe me, that's all I know. Oh, I'd hate to go to headquarters and have a blemish on my record. Yeah, stick around, Dewey. However, if I can be of further assistance, Don't call I... us. We'll call you. <laughs> a human skull can take, both inside and outside. <laughs> take it easy, Dr. Sinsky. Hold still, Danny. You had so much already, you can't take a little more. Mm -hmm. This is a work of art, what they did to your head. You like it, huh? It's like all art, Danny. I don't know much about it, but I know what I like. Yes, do I like this particular masterpiece, Alancy? I don't like it. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. <laughs> hey, watch it. Oh, you're maligning me, Danny. All my non-paying patients say I have such a beautiful bedside manner. Uh, there, you fixed up, Danny. Till the next time. How many next times can there be? No more for Holly Morris. Why? Can you tell me why? This is even a worse headache for you, isn't it, Danny? Three people dead. A heavy responsibility for you, for society. The suicide. Janet Guilford's. That's what bothers me. If it weren't suicide... Uh, stay where you are, Danny. I'll answer. Uh, first aid room, Dr. Sinsky speaking. Uh, uh, but, but you can, Lieutenant Clover. I'll take it, Doctor. Lieutenant Clover speaking. Oh, Mr. Clover, I insisted on talking to you. You were so nice and so polite. You remember me, the flea bag lady? Huh? Oh, oh yes. Yes, what's on your mind, Mr. Lamb? Uh, the bird, Mr. Clover. What? The bird. The little canary that belonged to poor Mrs. Guilford. The one in her room, remember? What about it? Well, I was just wondering about the law in these matters. The law about a dead person's property, you know, the heirs and so forth, and their lawful rights. Mrs. Lamp, please get to the point. Well, I was just wondering, if Mrs. Guilford has no heirs, please, may I keep the little bird? I've grown so attached to it. Oh, the melodies it makes up right out of its own little head. It still sings? Oh, yes, like a bird. Keep it, Mrs. Lamp, keep it. There'll be no other air. Oh, thank you, thank you. Doctor? What then? The headache. You did good. It doesn't bother me anymore. Hey! Hey, who's that down there? Danny Clover. Is that you, Mark? Hey, Danny. Come on up the steps over there. Okay. On the catwalk, Danny, be careful. Only got handrails at strategic places. You can walk out into the air if you ain't careful. How you feeling, boy? <laughs> in this height, does it get you in the stomach? Quite a sight. You know, I've never been in a power plant before. Those dynamos... Don't watch it, Danny. Watch the blowtorch. Oh, yeah. This conduit pipe sprung the leak. A little well job. You caught me right in the midst. Don't let me disturb you. No, go ahead. Go ahead, boy. What's on your mind? You and far between when I get to talk to someone on this job. With all this machinery to baby, I can appreciate it. Ah, these dynamos run themselves. I only wish I had their brains. So why the nighttime call, Danny? You like it here, huh? You like your work? It pays. You're going to have to find a replacement, Mark. I was wondering how you were going to phrase it. Three of them. Why did you have to kill them? Wasn't easy. Took my lifetime to build up to it. You almost got away with it. I figured I did. What happened? We found out your wife didn't commit suicide. 
A bird this big lived in the room where your wife died. The gas in that room wasn't enough to kill a canary. Why should it kill your wife? <laughs> Imagine that, a bird. Uh-huh. <laughs> Meaning your wife was dead before you turned on the gas. Suffocated, I figure. About the same effect as illuminating gas. Yeah, I read up on that one. <laughs> Imagine that, will you? A bird. Why, Holly, Mark? Why did you have to kill her? She was around when I had my argument with Thelma. First I paid her off, and... And she got greedy, so I changed my mind. Killing got easier all the time. Why the argument with Thelma? Thelma was saying me goodbye. After my wife tried to drown herself, Thelma suddenly wanted no part. So you killed her. Shot her in the park. And my wife got blamed for it. <laughs> for her. Let's go, Mark. You've been sensible up to now, Danny. It's been a pleasure listening to Let's you. Let's go. After what I can do to people, kill them. I found out I can do that. Stay where you are, Danny, or I'll whirl you to that pipe. Put down that torch, Mark. Oh, you know I can't do that. Uh-oh, reach for your gun again, and I'll... My uh... Lay fix arms where I'm taking you. Come on. No, you won't take me. You won't take me, Danny! Mark, come back here. You big Danny, you'll never... seated him as he fell from above. Then in that sudden, swift time, the face masked in horror, the eyes pleading in a mind as he clawed the air past me, a man's awful recognition that he's dead. Then the instant was over, and there was nothing. Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia. The program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. The musical score was composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. Included in the cast tonight were Jane Webb, Eleanor Audley, Jack Crucian, Sheldon Leonard, Bert Holland, and Stanley Farrar. <laughs>